Assalamu alayka ya Fatima al-Zahra. Peace be upon you, O Fatima al-Zahra. Assalamu alayka ya Binta Rasulillah. Peace be upon you, O the daughter of the Holy Prophet. Assalamu alayka ya Zawjat Amir al-Mu'mineen. Peace be upon you, O the spouse of the commander of the faithful. Assalamu alayka ya Binta Khadija al-Gharra. Peace be upon you, O the daughter of Khadija, the spouse of the Holy Prophet. اللهم إنا لا نعلم منهم إلا خيرا اللهم إنا لا نعلم منهم إلا خيرا وأنت أعلم بنا من بهم منا اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد شهيد قاسم سليماني was the major general of the Revolutionary Guard, the IRGC, and he was the noble commander of the Sipai Quds, the Quds Force. Back in the 1980s, he fought and helped defend his country and Islam against American-backed Saddam Hussein during the Eight-Year War, and he soon became a commander. Despite being opposed by America and its allies, Iran was victorious in that war against Saddam Hussein. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but back in 2006, when Israel invaded Lebanon, General Qasem Soleimani was sent there as a key strategist. Together with Shaheed Imad Mughniya, he protected Sayyid Hassan Nasrallah. Due to this collaboration, Hezbollah and the people of Lebanon were victorious in this war against Israel. Then, back in 2012, when American-backed ISIS Daesh terrorists popped seemingly out of nowhere and started creating absolute terror and turmoil across Syria, it was General Qasem Soleimani who was invited to come and help the people by the Syrian government. And while America and its puppet mouthpieces were leaping to try to paint Bashar al-Assad as a tyrant who, for some reason, bombs his own people, it was Iran and its allies who saw through all the lies and went to the aid of the people of Syria. Today, the people are resuming and rebuilding their homes in Syria under the secure presidency of Bashar al-Assad. The people of Syria were victorious against America's schemes. Then, in 2014 to 15, when American-backed ISIS Daesh rampaged through Iraq, spilling the blood of countless men, women, and children, it was General Qasem Soleimani who was sent to counter them. And while others helped a great deal when it came to ridding the world of the filth of ISIS Daesh, one name will always come to the minds of the people of the world when it comes to who actually destroyed ISIS. And that name is not Obama or Trump. No, it's Qasim Soleimani. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Dear viewers, brothers and sisters in faith, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Tonight, in one narration, is the martyrdom anniversary of Fatima al Zahra. Salamullahi alayha. And also in the other uh, and besides is the first night after after General Soleimani and General Abu Mahdi and their companions and their companions were martyred. Uh, peace and blessings of uh, Almighty Allah be upon their souls. Today, tonight in this program we're going to discuss with you about different aspects of the lives of the heroes of the, of the humanity. And this program is coming to you from uh, Thagalain English TV, which is the first program which uh, is going to be broadcast to you in English. And joining me to tonight is Dr. Sheikh Zaid As Salami, the lecturer and researcher at Hausa Ilmiya. Salam alaikum, doctor. Salam alaikum. Uh, how are you feeling? Okay. Good, thank you. Alhamdulillah. As the opening remark, uh, we're going to discuss about the concept of sacrifice. This, uh, this actually concept is somehow controversial because it can be translated in different ways. Is that sacrifice is only in the path of Allah or just for the humanity and human beings? What is that sacrifice and what, it, what does it mean? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, wa salatu wa salamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa alihi al-Tahirin. I would also like to express my condolences to the Muslim Ummah on the 
anniversary of the martyrdom of as Siddiqatul Kubra, Fatima al Zahra, Sayyidatan Nisa al Alameen. And indeed, there are many things that we are able to speak about in a combination of uh, the two events that we are also um, unfortunate to be able to be going through in this particular week. And that is the um, atrocious attack against uh, innocent individuals who indeed represented um, something that was beyond the geographic location of their place of birth. And I think uh, combining Fatima to Zahra as a personality in the early years of Islam and also these uh, martyrs who passed away uh, and were innocently killed a few days ago, we are able to have that um, most uh, expressive understanding of what sacrifice means, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, the greatest model of sacrifice is Fatima al Zahra. And um, we know from a theological perspective, when we do talk about sacrifice, as you said, it might carry different kind of uh, interpretations and understandings. But ultimately, as Muslim individuals, uh, we believe that sacrifice is the highest level of devotion a person can express in his or her practical life as Muslims. That's right. Because as a believer, we want to express on a practical side, you know, how we are able to uh, implement that level of Iman in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, Theologically, when we look at what sacrifice means, we are able to understand it within this kind of framework that if I believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and I have um, that unconditional faith in God and I know through yaqeen and conviction that Almighty God exists and that there are certain things that He wants from me that would benefit me and not anybody else and therefore I would I want to express that I want to uh, live by that and I can only do this through that devotional sides and that's why when we perform our daily prayers that's a way of me expressing my connection my relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so with, with your interpretation I'm sorry uh, no, for that's okay for with your interpretation this, uh, this actually concept refers to even other religions, as well as, for example, in Christianity, we have some prophets, uh, like, uh, like Prophet John, sacrificed himself for uh, actually the That's concept right. of uh, forbidding from evil, That's uh, right. enjoining to good and forbidding from evil. Very true. Or somehow we can say other prophets, they sacrificed sometimes, and they also sacrificed them their property. Some of them sacrificed their life. Okay, could you please cl clarify more on this issue? Sure. This, well, if we were if we were to come before, go back before Fatima to Zahra and Rasulullah and Ahlul Bayt and the sacrifices that they made, we're able to use many wonderful examples of Prophet Ibrahim and Ismail, and um, the sacrifice that Ismail alayhi salam made. You know, and, and, and that's why, you know, there's that reference of وَفَدَيْنَاهُ بِذِبْحٍ عَذِيمٍ Because um, the word sacrifice in Arabic, uh, there are different uh, terms that are used for the word sacrifice. You know, you have, you know, tathhiyah, you have fida, you know, you have qurban. You know, all of these uh, represent one way, that level of sacrifice that a person needs to have. But the important thing is, you know, when we are making reference to, for example, Nabiullah Isa with Jesus alayhi salam, the Christian understanding of that word sacrifice, they might uh, replace that with the word salvation, for example, or, you know, he died for the sins of others, for example. You know, that, that's also a kind of sacrifice, although we might not agree completely with that kind of um, way of looking at things, but ultimately, as you um, correctly said, all religions have some kind of sacrifice. So yes, 
Uh, but as Muslims, I think that we've carried on with that legacy. And that's why as Muslims, you know, we still honor he who or she who sacrifices the most valuable thing that they have, and that is their life. Right. So you have sacrifice, as you said, of their wealth, sacrifice of this, sacrifice of that. But the ultimate sacrifice right. is the sacrifice of their of life. life. And not only for their religion, but for humanity as well. Indeed, can we say that it's a mission-based term, which means that, for example, regarding the person that, the person that is, that whose mission is to sacrifice, the mission that is uh, given to him, for example, the mission uh, uh, that was given to uh, Prophet Abraham was to sacrifice his son. Uh, the mission right. to uh, John or Yahya was to sacrifice his life. Right. And also, uh, when we come down, actually, in the history, or we come to, uh, actually, later on, we, we, when we go later on, we'll see our prophet, our imams, that That's they right. sacrifice their life, their pro property, their, f their family, every, they, pr they sacrificed everything they had, just like Imam Hussein sacrificed his own property, uh, children, uh, companion, everything That's right. in the path of Allah. Exactly, and that, and that perfectly said, and, and which is why we can see in the Holy Quran and we can see in the Ahadith of Ahl al Bayt that ongoing emphasis on if you really believe that you are able to implement that whole understanding of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then are you ready to make sacrifices? And that's why you know that the ayah in the Holy Quran, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, inna salati wa nusuki wa mahyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. La sharika lah wa bidhalika umirt. So when I, when I'm, I am sacrificing time for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in my ibadah, when I'm say, sacrificing time for God in my uh, rituals that I am doing, when I'm sacrificing uh, my life for the sake of God, mahyaya wa mamati, my life and my death, I need to make sure it's on the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why we call it, that's why we continuously say, fi sabilillah, it's on the path of God. So if it if it m moves away from the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then not only will it be away from the devotional elements, but it will also not serve for religion, nor will it serve for humanity. Because, you know, if I'm not doing something that will assist my fellow human beings, then it becomes selfish. Right. And Ithar, which is another meaning or another word, another Arabic word used um, to represent sacrifice, means that you are selfless, that you are not selfish, that you are selfless, that you're not doing this for personal gains. You're not doing this for fame. You're not doing this for money. You're not doing this for any kind of uh, gain except to make sure that you are uh, doing it for the path of Allah subhanahu Can we say wa it has a, it, it's a kind of triangle concept which has which is actually uh, uh, which is made of intention, uh, ideology, and act. It I needs would, an intention yeah, I, I that would you say have so. to actually consciously do that that ethar. Right. Also, you have to have an ideology. I mean, you have to have a belief. You have to believe in what you're doing, and then you have to act. For example, sacrifice yourself and sacrifice your property, everything. That's right. You have to do the action. Can That's we say right. That? Very well said. So when coming back to the, you know, one of the occasions that we are commemorating the martyrdom of Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, everyone knows the story that is in Surah Al-Dahr, Surah Al-Insan. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. وَيُطْعِمُونَ الطَّعَامَ عَلَى حُبِّهِ مِسْكِينًا وَيَتِيمًا وَأَسِيرًا So these three nights that they continued to sacrifice for the sake of others, for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in offering what they had to others and staying hungry. And they clearly said, إِنَّمَا نُطْعِمُكُمْ لِوَجْهِ اللَّهِ لَا نُرِيدُ مِنْكُمْ جَزَاءً وَلَا شُكُورًا Only for the sake of God. Only for the sake of God. And we're not, we're not expecting any kind of gratitude or thankfulness or anything else. We're not doing it for the sake of anything other than for God. So yes, that, that's, a, that's a very good way of explaining it, that triangle um, uh, symbolism 
of how we need to be able to make this world a better place. You know, that, that was right. the objective of Rasulullah. The Holy Prophet was mercy for mankind. Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, the same thing. And the rest of Ahlul Bayt. Imam Hussein, his movement, his movement was not only an Islamic movement. It, it existed within the perimeters of the Islamic Ummah, but it was for the sake of awakening the hearts of humanity. And that's why his message is eternal. And a hero, the message of a hero will always be eternal. That's right. And there's one more thing that might, and that may, uh, many of the viewers may, might like to know about a sacrifice, is that what is the conclusion before going through the examples and talking about the life of uh, Fatima al-Zahra salamullah alayha what will be the conclusion of ithar and sacrifice for example in <coughs> for example if imam hussein sacrificed an infant baby what happened then and what was the conclusion uh, and uh, and also we have the, this example happened about uh, the prophets, the uh, the infa infallible imams. What is the conclusion? So I think one way of looking at it is where we see things as Muslims, as devoted believers, and also as Christians and Jews and other religions yeah. as well, where the equation that we have is not a materialistic equation. Mm -hmm. There's a ghaybi element to all of this, which where we are connected to the unseen world. Metaphysical. Yes, uh, the unseen world, that, that realm where we know that what we are doing in this short, very, very uh, limited uh, realm of dunya that we are in, it's not going to be the end of everything. There will be a continuation that in the hereafter there are going to be things waiting for us whether good or bad that's another that's right. issue but also at the same time uh, the legacy that is going to be left that I if I am living such a life where although it might be a short life like the uh, infant child of Imam Hussein alayhi salam will it have an impact on those after me. So that's what sacrifice is. So my um, way of living, what it is that I stand for, what it is that I represent, mm -hmm. will it lead to the awakening of hearts after me? That's right. And if we were to look at it in this particular way, we would understand how broad our explanation can be about sacrifice, about selflessness, about humanity, about a hero, and most, most importantly, about martyrdom as well. You know, that's why when we make reference to Fatima to Zahra alayhi salam, we, um, at that young age that she lived, you that's know, right. the, the, the quality of life for her and for us is important. That's right. And the legacy that she left is also is, is very important for okay. us. Okay, Sheikh, thank you very much. We're going to continue on the discussion, but we're going to have a break uh, sure. and we'll back to the viewers. Uh, we'll see you next. Thank you. Welcome back, dear viewers. You're watching uh, Heroes of Humanity from Thagalain English TV. And we were discussing about the concept of sacrifice with our dear uh, expert, Sheikh Dr. Zaid as -Salami. We discussed about the concept of uh, sacrifice in different aspects, and we talked about the meaning of it. And we finally get to the end that, that what is the conclusion and impact of sacrifice. Doctor, as the last issue that uh, I want to add to uh, your nice comments was that does, does the, the person who, are, who is making a sacrifice mean 
the impacts like for example uh, Imam Hussein uh, sacrificed his infant baby to show to the world to awaken the world that who is uh, right and who is wrong who is evil and who is good it means that uh, the regime the system that is killing an infant baby that is killing ch uh, that is killing innocent people is always evil and those who sacrifice themselves for the sake of god are always right is that uh, is that a, actually related to the conclusion well i i think uh, death and um the type of death will interpret whether um, that particular individual is going to be uh, remembered in the positive way or in the negative way. So even though death is death, but the kind of death will uh, indeed uh, uh, explain and also define uh, what kind of uh, representation this individual had. I also uh, believe that when we're talking about sacrifice, it doesn't necessarily need to be ending by death. You know, that could probably be one way of a person's life um, finishing. So when you use the example of um, Ahlul Bayt alayhim as -salam, it was not that they uh, wanted that their objective was death per se. Their objective was to be as selfless as possible, to uh, sacrifice what they are able to for the sake of a greater good. Mm. And that's why their memory will always stay alive. And it's, it's because they wanted to show on a practical level they, they, they're proof of belief in the Creator. So me, you, um, the brothers and sisters who are watching, when we uh, are among those who believe that we need to make sacrifices in life, we progress on a daily basis gradually in whatever kind of uh, field that we may be in. And when we are progressing with that in our minds, that we need to sacrifice, that we need to make sure that our goal is not dunya, that our, our goal is, our goal is ak akhirah, and we're working for the hereafter, then of course that type of death, you know, that's why I, I recited that ayah in Surah Al-An'am, um, that type of death is going to be uh, very valuable. You know, mahiyaya wa mamati lillahi rabbil alameen. So when I am living, it's for God. When I die, it's for God. It's not for any other purpose or any other other objective. And that's what sacrifice sacrifice means. That's right. I'm going to ask you about uh, her sacrifice. I mean, uh, her acts of sacrifice during during her life, and we're going to bridge her life. I mean, the sacrifice in her life to uh, General Soleimani and General Abu Mahdi that how they actually get a kind of we can say simplified or we can say get uh, the role model from mm. the life of Fatima al Zahra well um, it's of course a tragic event that all of us um, are experiencing firsthand and everyone is on the tip of their toes because uh, a lot of tension around the world uh, no one likes war no one likes um, their home to be invaded no one likes their father or their mother to come back home in a coffin and therefore I think every single person out there is able to relate to, to this um, we know for a fact that according to all standards beyond religion such a uh, such an atrocity was clear violation on any level and therefore um, it's something that we are now able to relate to very very emotionally as well That's right. and I think that 
you know, when you look at these uh, wonderful individuals who sacrificed so much for the sake of humanity, um, we need to understand where did they learn this? What kind of uh, instructions were they given? Um, who was their role model? Um, what kind of ideological structure did yes. they follow? Yes, exactly. And um, we will be able to clearly uh, conclude that if it wasn't for their devotion, again, I repeat the word devotion, it was, if it wasn't for their devotion, first and foremost to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also to the teachings and instructions and life of A'imma to Ahlul Bayt alayhum salam, in particular, Fatima to Zahra and her son, Imam Hussein alayhum salam, they would not have done and achieved what it is that they have. You know, you look at the example of um, General Qasim Soleimani, and you see that, you know, he was uh, a personality beyond the boundaries and That's the territory of his country. You know, he represented something more than that. And I think that's a very, very important point for us to, to remember, the, the humane side of these individuals. You look at um, Shaheed Hajj Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, and you see that what was, what was he representing, you know, what was he doing? You know, yes, we have examples of other individuals, if I could say global individuals, you know, or, you know, public kind of figures uh, where we might, might, you know, enter into the realm of popular culture like um, Che Guevara or Fidel Castro or, or people like uh, these individuals who everyone knows about, you know, that they were um, activists, that they um, were respected, that they were revolutionaries, that they were military theorists, for example. You know, you look at the likes of Mahatma Gandhi and you can see that he has left a very positive imprint right. on uh, humanity. And one of the blessings of the martyrdom, even though it's very unfortunate for us as a Muslim Ummah, because they were the thorns in the eyes of Islamic extremist groups. But we can see that they have left an imprint and they will stay as a legacy for everyone to emulate and to follow. And that's what sacrifice is. So uh, I think that w in many ways, a lot of good has come out from their shahada. And you know, if, I, I don't know how much time we have, but if we want to look into the uh, verse of the Holy Quran that was mentioned the, in the beginning of this program that you know وَلَا تَحْسَبَنَّ الَّذِينَ قُتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَمْوَاتَ Don't think, don't assume that those who have been killed, have been, were slain in the path of God are dead. بَلْ أَحْيَاء They're alive. That's right. They're alive. What kind of life is this? What kind of um, being alive is this? You know, are they physically alive among us? No, alhamdulillah. Sometimes, sometimes we, when we look more uh, precisely, we see their blood is also work. Their blood, their, their blood also works. That's right. It means that, for example, it's like, uh, it's like just they're alive, they're alive, and people are moving, yes. uh, and they're following them. Just like as you, just as you saw the last two days, many people in Iraq, different cities, Karbala, Najaf, in in, in actually Mashhad, Qom, Tehran. Actually, that was a actually uh, huge mass of people coming into coming into the streets, and a new soul uh, actually were uh, actually went into the body of the country and body of the Muslims. I think. Yes. Can we say that it empowered people? It really did, and that's why I'm saying Ahya, they're alive, and. Um, this means they're not only uh, ahya, they're alive, they also give life 
to and give soul to the body of the Muslim community. That's right. They're empowering people. And now I, I, I'm not a political um, analyst, so I, I'm not talking in any way about the political side of uh, these kind of uh, yes. dramas that are happening in Iran and the United States or Iraq and, and all these other things. Although these things are important for us as Muslims, as human beings. That's right. But I'm, lo I'm not looking at this from the um, political side. That's right. Yes. Um, if I was to look at it from the political side, you know, him being an, uh, an, an official uh, representative of a country, being in officially invited to another country, um, and not hiding in any way and all these other things and the violations that I spoke about, that's a whole topic on its own. But I think that something that we need to shed light on is the humane side, that's the right. insani side of, the, of these people yes. where they have created a movement. Yes, yes. They have created a movement and 100% everyone will agree with us, even those who are not fond of... Islam or of, te of, of the Shia school of thought or of um, Iraq or Iran policy, they will agree that someone who they didn't know about last week, now they know everything about. That's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right. you know, where these people, you, know, you don't see any images of uh, Shaheed Suleimani or Shaheed Abu Mahdi al Muhandis, you know, with arms. Uh, exactly, uh, uh, exactly. Uh, holding guns or something like that. You know, you don't see them committing atrocities like Daesh and Al Qaeda and Nusra and all these other things. That's right. You know, you see the humane side of them and and how they were family people, how they were humble, how uh, they were not looking after. Uh, wealth or not looking after reputation or after fame or anything like that and I, I think that's something very important for us to remember and that's the legacy that they will leave behind you know that they um, have created such a movement not only empowering the uh, global resistance against uh, superpowers but they will make sure that there are going to be many, many ramifications after this uh, tyrannical attack. And, this, and the, reminds of, this reminds us of a sentence from Imam al Hussein, uh, actually uh, uh, asking the people, uh, the, the, the troops of Yazid, mm -hmm. that if, if you are not Muslims, uh, if you are not Muslims, be free people. This man, it, yes. he addresses the humanity. That's right. And also, as you said, General Soleimani, General Abu Mahdi, regardless of politicians and politics, regardless of territories and borders, yes. regardless of religions and actually de different sects, they were like international figures that battled for humanity. That's they right. supported humanity. So if, even if, you, if, you're, if you're an atheist, just if you are a human, you will believe in them and you will love them. Yes. Where is the honor? Where is honor? You people who are talking about honor and respect and international laws and human rights, where is that? You know, it was illegal. It was inhumane. It was cowardly done. And... You know, where, again, where are, the, where are the voices of the international community? Where is the outrage of the international community? Alhamdulillah, a lot of high-profile individuals have spoken in favor of um, these martyrs and have said that you have killed the one person who has been fighting our enemy. That's right. So the United States, for example, is saying that we have an enemy the enemy is ISIS. That's right. What was uh, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis and Shaheed Qasim Soleimani? What were they doing? Who were they fighting? Their only, their only sin was to fight, uh, uh, fight against those who are threatening the humanity. Yes, and those who were made by the uh, Obama, the the Bush, the Clinton, the 
uh, Trump administration, that's the, right. the Daesh that's right. and exactly. Al Qaeda and everything else. And therefore, it's always important for us to remember in Iraq, for example, the people who stood in favor of these uh, individuals were not only the Shia, the That's Sunnis, right. the Kurd, the um, Sabi'a, the Yazidis. You know, you, if you were to s ask the Yazidi community, which is a, a minority sect um, in, in Iraq, they would say that the only person that saved us from the claws of Daesh was um, al hasht al-Shaabi and um, the military um, strategies of uh, Qasim Soleimani. He was a military strategist. He was someone who was giving theories to these people in order for them to overcome the oppressions of the aggressors. The aggressors in Iraq, in Syria, in other countries, in Afghanistan, were nobody other than these uh, U.S. backed and U.S. funded and U.S. founded mm -hmm. uh, extremist groups, unfortunately. And that's why everyone is mourning them. Can everyone is mourning them. Regarding From India to Afghanistan right. to Yemen to Syria to Lebanon, all around the world there were uh, cries of uh, mourning and again alhamdulillah this is i think uh, uh, the beginning of a, a lot of very interesting things that are going to That's come right. ahead did you know that i was reading um that since the uh tragic events that happened on friday over 2600 people uh born new infants born boys that were born they their names was Qasim. Qasim. <laughs> right. So you know there is a new uh, a new that. generation that will come out, That's a right. new generation that will come out that will use the likes of these individuals as their role model. As, as the role as model person. for humanity. Okay. And that's why we need to emphasize on this point. Heroes for humanity. It's not in favor of um, propagating the Shia religion. That's it's right. not in favor of uh, forced conversion into Islam. Exactly. And all these other very, very bad propaganda that is being used against us as Muslims, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, Alhamdulillah, you know, even though, you know, they continue to use that word and brand uh, Shaheed Qasim Soleimani as a terrorist. It's, yeah. not, it's not working. It's not fair. It's not working. Yes, of course it's not fair, but it's not working. No one believes it. That's right. Because everyone's saying, okay, well, is, if he's a terrorist, why weren't we hearing about this before? Why was he invited officially by these countries, yeah, Afghanistan exactly. and Syria and Lebanon and Yemen and Iraq and, and, and if he was such an individual, why is his one and only focus to um, eliminate the true enemy of humanity, and that is uh, uh, Daesh and all the other uh, proxy groups that are that are that are around. That's why we need to uh, be proud of what it is that we that we that we have, and we need to remember that the the resistance will continue. Resistance against against oppression of any kind, whether it be oppression within the uh, land of Islam, of Muslims, or whether it be oppression by any of the other superpowers that are uh, around. And, and, and you can't continue to turn a blind eye. You can't claim to be a supporter of human rights, but still violate the most simple of things. That's and right. where is the, 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 the honor in, in all of that? And that's why I think, you know, if anyone who is in the United States or anywhere else, you know, when they hear that, um, well, this is in retaliation to one uh, American contractor being killed. Well, why wasn't there any news about that? What's his name? What's the information surrounding this? What's the proof that it was... Uh, General Qasim Soleimani or Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis. 
How about the rest of the people that's that right. were innocently slain on that day? You know, where is the story? And that's why there's a very big difference between um, our understanding of sacrifice and our understanding of heroes and their understanding of sacrifice and heroes. If you yeah, their heroes just like Hulk, like Superman, <laughs> like <laughs> yes. imaginary figures that do not exist in the world. That's and, right. And even if you watch the film, you don't understand why he's he's making a battle. That's right. But 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 when we are looking at General Soleimani and Abu Mahdi al muhandis we see that they're actually uh, they're working for humanity, and they are reuniting. The human beings. That's right, bringing everyone together. As I've we said. see in the clips, in the, in the, actually uh, in, in a short clip we had during the program, you see it in the United States. Yeah. Even in the United States with such a actually propaganda against yeah. General Soleimani. Yeah. Uh, the, the actually writers, actually uh, scholars in the United States and elsewhere, India as you mentioned. Right. And since you are aware of different countries as you are a professor, uh, you know Arab world also, uh, English-speaking countries. You see, people were reunited regardless of their religion. Very true, very true. And uh, again, that's the blessings of, as you said, the blood. You know, when there's blood shed um, and when some, a, a, a person is slain, uh, there are going to be a lot of good things that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives. And that's lutf, that's grace that comes from God, you know, and that's another, again, another jolt into the hearts of, of humankind where we understand that if we were to ask any of these uh, leaders of the free lands, the supposed free lands, and we would ask them out of your, the top of your mind, can you mention five soldiers that were killed in your army? What's their names? That's right. They wouldn't be able to mention it, you know. The only thing, the only honor that they have to give uh, to these soldiers is th the flag. And, and that's it. You know, do you know that there are uh, so many illnesses that are happening? So the, the problem of PTSD, the problem of what they call the Gulf War Syndrome, that's right. the problem of suicide, all of these things that American soldiers are suffering that American soldiers are suffering, it's because they're not fighting for a cause. That's right. They're fighting for political gain. They're not yes. fighting for humanity. And yes. that's the difference. That's right. When we, shall, when we shed tears, it's tears that will empower us, that tears that will give us more energy and support. And that's why we will continue. That's right. You know? That's right, Sheikh. So we'll stop the discussion here at this point. We're going to have a short break and we'll come back again and we'll continue on this subject to the end of the program. Sure. Thank you. Thank Dear you. viewers, uh, let's, w uh, let's watch this clip and we'll continue the subject together with you, inshallah, after, after that. Qasim Suleimani on the Ummah. Al-Jaysh al-Ameriki huwa al-ladhi qatala ha'ula wa huwa al-ladhi sayatfa al-Sama. الاستشهاديون الذين أخرجوا أمريكا في السابق من منطقتنا ما زالوا موجودين وأكثر بكثير مما كانوا في السابق الرد على دماء قاسم سليماني وعبو مهدي هو إخراج القوات الأمريكية من كل منطقتنا سنواصل الطريق لن تضيع دماء الشهداء وسننتصر في نهاية المطار Welcome back, dear viewers. Thank you very much for being with us. You're watching uh, Heroes of Humanity from Sagalin English TV. Uh, with me today, if with me tonight, is Sheikh uh, Zaid Al Salami, lecturer and researcher at Hausa Ilmiya. Okay, doctor, we were uh, uh, we were actually discussing about Abu, uh, the General Abu Mahdi and General Soleimani. We're going to continue about the fact that who were those people, and you know, we want to know about. Uh, we want to know a little bit more about these people. Who were they? Uh, what, they what was their muse, and actually, what was their role model 
and what were what were their uh, actually uh, uh, what they wanted by doing these actions. For example, I've heard that uh, General Abu Mehdi was about four months uh, uh, actually apart from his family. It means that uh, I heard nearly uh, recently that he nearly didn't see his family for four months, and he promised to come back, but never come back, and he martyred. What was their goal? What type of people were they? Well, alhamdulillah, when you can see all of these images and clips that are that are appearing, and by the way, something that I think um, many viewers might um, feel from their personalities but not know is they did not in most cases they did not allow themselves to be recorded and a lot of these recordings are appearing now after their they they uh, after their martyrdom they omitted selfishness yes because they didn't they weren't doing any of these things to put on a show you know they didn't want they didn't have you know, uh, media following them or, or things like that. They were m making sure that they had a go objective and a goal. And I think that's a very important point for us to uh, keep in mind because, you know, when you're doing something for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it grows and it expands. They did this for God. And we're talking about sacrifice here, right? So um, w the meaning of sacrifice is that you're not looking at quantity, you're looking at quant quant quality. That's right. You know, to, when pu you're to purify the act for the Lord. That's right. Uh, that level of purification comes uh, after you have made sure that you, your, your ego is n in no way important. Mm -hmm. And so sacrifice also means that you know, their family members are going to uh, be sacrificing you know they they were away from long periods of time from their families you know they were always on the road yes exactly. because uh they had uh an, an objective and they would continuously say that well if we rest the enemy is uh, not resting so gotcha. how can we rest gotcha. and so therefore in this global kind of resistance that, that, that's happening, the, the movement towards humanity, the movement towards social justice, the movement towards establishing peace uh, in their way was only effective if there was the elimination of the enemy. And no one can even dare say that their one and only goal was the United States because if that was the case how many opportunities did um, Al-Hajj al-Shaabi or um, uh, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis or Qasim Sulaimani how many opportunities did they have to attack uh, American bases inside of uh, Iraq America. and there are over, there are four official ones and there are ab around about 20 that are um, more how about the 14 14 mm -hmm. bases that are oh, American bases that are in the Middle East and uh, North a Africa and do you know how many soldiers there are between 60 to 70,000 why weren't they attacked if not in Syria, if not in um, Qatar, if not in Kuwait. You know, Kuwait alone, you know, has a large th amount, 13, 12, 13,000 soldiers. You know, in, in uh, Iraq itself, you know, Al-Hajj al-Shaabi is a strong entity. Mm -hmm. But again, their objective was never to um, attack uh, or continuously savagely attack uh, the United States um, establishments that are there and I think that's a, again another important point to to remember yes although uh, America is uh, a bit less than 12,000 kilometers away from Iran but there are so many um, important uh, bases, bases that are around here that Qasim Soleimani could have effectively yes. um, uh, in, 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 the, in his strategy to reach, but he didn't. 
They didn't. Shaheed Abu Mahdi al Muhandis didn't. And that again speaks a, uh, a lot of volume about their, uh, the values that they stood for, the principles that they had. Right. And I think that's something that everyone can learn from, whether you're a Shi'i, whether you're a Sunni, whether you're a Yazidi, whether you are, as you said, you know, you don't affiliate to a religion, you're going to be able to somehow relate to, to these individuals. And that's, and that's a blessing in itself, you know. Uh, how are we able to, you know, continue on um, in uh, allowing ourselves to uh, keep their memory alive? I think by remembering that uh, there's always going to be negative propaganda. That's right. That, you know, uh, unfortunately, along with Islamophobia, along with uh, stereotyping, along with you know, um, a lot of these media outlets uh, being um, working for a certain uh, agenda or for a certain administration, we, um, if we are genuine and true to ourselves, we will be able to see the reality and the, and, and, and the truth. And, you know, one of the things that um, His, His Eminence Sayyid Hassan Nasrullah had said um, in his uh, recent talk was, that if you were to attack um, civilians, American civilians, right. you are um, supporting, you're endorsing, you're feeding the agenda of what it is that Trump wants. And therefore, you know, he said that civilians are in no way to be, um, to be attacked. Um, again, that's something that's based on principle, that's something that's based on values. And these values, where do they come from? as we, we know that they ca came from Ahlul Bayt alayhim as right. that Qasim Sulaimani, Abu Mahdi al-Muhandis, the martyrs that were um, killed on, in, on that same uh, event, and also just before that, the, the martyrs that were killed in Al-Qa'im as well, you know, innocently again, yes, yes. Um, where Trump proudly announced that, that this was some of he, one of his doings as well. You know, what did, why were they all the way on the borders of Iraq and Syria? What were they doing there? That's you know, right. You, yeah, yeah, here there, a, a question arises. I mean, some people who are, well, I don't want to say ignorant, but this question arises from ignorance. Yeah. You know, they would say, okay, General Soleimani was an Iranian. What was he doing in Syria? What was he doing in Iraq? What was he doing in other countries? Or even Abu Mahdi al muhandis was Iraqi person. What was he doing in Iran? You know, see, such, such sentences that arises from ignorance, but sometimes bother or annoys some of pe some people, some of the minds. So, could you please a little bit more clarify and shed light on this issue? We could easily turn the table around and counter and counter argue and say, well, what what is sixty, seventy thousand American troops doing? in the Middle East. That's right. What are, you're, you're protecting the interests of the United States. Do you really need that many? Very good, yes. <laughs> you know, do you need, do you need a, a, a 43, 42, 43 hectare embassy in Baghdad? That's really? Right. That's you know, right. and then they're, 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 they're making another one, a consulate um, in, the, in, the, in Kurdistan as well. You, what's that for? You know, is it really serving that many um, American expatriates living in Iraq? Are there that many, you know, uh, people, American citizens living in Iraq for there to be a need for such uh, an, an embassy? Okay, you can have an embassy wherever you want to. Iraq is a sovereign country. Um, Iraq, like Iran, respects and honors the um, laws of uh, the international community, but when these laws are violated, of course, someone needs to be held responsible and accountable. Um, it can't go without some kind of, you know, um, ramification. It can't. It, it, there needs to be some kind of responsibility that um, or accountability. And I think, you know, people are waking up to this. People are realizing that, well, him being or them helping people in Yemen or in Lebanon or in Syria um, or in Afghanistan 
and um, the the purpose of them helping them was for the sake of them, you know, um, right. uh, coming out of the of the ordeal that they that they're in. And they were official representatives. They were, if we could say, you know. Um, uh, diplomats or they were officials of countries they weren't hiding behind um, you know uh, they weren't on the run they weren't like bin Laden or Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi or, or uh, they, right. they weren't they were not on the run they were there and they were entering through um, official uh, gates through the um, for example airports with their exactly. passports um, the uh, Adil Abdul Mahdi had said that it was through my invitation that uh, Qasim Soleimani came, that General Qasim Soleimani came, and I was supposed to have a meeting with him at 8:30 right. in the in the morning. You know That's what? Right. Yes. What more official can you have than this? And therefore, again, you know, this this is going to serve uh, in our favor as. Uh, people who want justice, not just as Muslims, but people who want global justice, people who want peace. That's right. That we uh, are not uh, bloodthirsty. If uh, Muslims around the world were bloodthirsty, there would be retaliations happening, you know. Um, but alhamdulillah, we have wise leadership. We have our maraj at taqlids. Right. We have the likes in Iraq the likes of the Grand Ayatollah Sistani in Iran, the likes of the Grand Ayatollah Khamenei, may Allah prolong their lives, and all of the other maraja who have continuously said, suppress your anger, don't uh, react in, in, in a negative way, make sure that you are doing this. Even when they, the people got angry after the Al-Qa'im in Iraq, after the Al-Qa'im attack, they went to the American embassy, you know, and, you know, they were spray painting and they were doing little things, you know. Yes, you know, according to in international laws, diplomats need to be um, always uh, respected right. and diplomats need to um, be protected. That's but right. uh, it didn't last. Orders were given that you need to remove yourselves and they removed themselves. That's right. And... Of course, that's a, another example of having honor. An honorable person will always make sure that they stand with their values and their principles, okay. especially when it comes to serving what is good, that's serving right. their country, serving humanity. And even those who, as I said, were against um, uh, these great personalities have nothing but good to say about them. And you yes. said that they were made many sacrifices when it came to their own family members. That's you know, right. how difficult what is it for family members to not have their father, to not have their brother, to not have um, their grandfather around with them. But they knew that these kind of, uh, of people so are doing Sheikh, something in Sheikh, the best the form. Last, the last comment in one sense, because we have less than a minute, right. as a conclusion. What would you actually uh, express? I would say that there are hidden enemies. I would say that we should not fall into the uh, negative propaganda. I would say that uh, it's always important for a person of any religion, of any uh, affiliation, to remember the principles, the human principles that we all have, all collectively have, and we're able to share a lot. There are so many similarities that we have, and I think we need to work on that. That's right. And these kind of figures and the events that are unfolding these days will assist us to become powerful and unite as human beings. Inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you very much, Thank you. Sheikh. Thank you very much, dear viewers. Uh, this is the end of this episode of the program. Thank you for being with us. And if you could, please do not forget the Salatul Layla to Dafn tonight for uh, General Soleimani and uh, Abu Mahdi and their companions. Thank you very much once again, time. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon you all. And uh, fi amanillah.